Now, a new analysis shows that the six-ton iconic altar stone at the heart of Stonehenge originated from northeastern Scotland rather than southwest Wales. Why the Scottish DNA is so unique. 12,000 years ago, Scotland was ice. No trees, no people. Just freezing cold and melting glaciers. Then came the hunters in small bands. With them were flint blades and deer hides. They followed rivers, fished, and shelters. For years, all we found were bones and stones. Then DNA testing revealed shocking truths. Strange visitors, lost migrations, foreign influences. Soon enough, Scottish DNA became unlike any other on Earth. How did all of this happen? And did the original Scottish genetic markers survive these? Before we get right into it, let us know in the comments. Do you think the hunter's genetic markers still exist in today's modern Scots? The first Scots and life after the Ice Age. Scientists have recently revealed that the first Scots that inhabited Scotland after the Ice Age had dark skin, blue eyes, and dark hair. A genetic combination that seems unusual today, but was quite common in ancient Western Europe, particularly during the Mesolithic era around 7,000 to 4,000 years ago. Although these Mesolithic people were few, they lived in spread out groups. That isolation turned out to be very important to their history as it helped preserve their unique genes for thousands of years. They relied entirely on the land and sea for survival, so their diets, movements, and even social groups were influenced by the natural environment. Because Scotland's geography is so rugged with deep valleys, steep mountains, and remote islands, those early genes stayed mostly undisturbed for a long time. Even today, some highland and island communities carry genetic markers that trace back to these first settlers. It's a rare kind of continuity you don't see in many places across Europe. Then, around 4,500 years ago, one major change happened. A new group of people, known as the Beaker Folk, arrived from mainland Europe, likely from areas around modern-day Netherlands, Germany, and northern France. They got their name from the bell-shaped pottery they carried with them. But it turned out that what they brought was far more significant than just fancy ceramics. These people introduced metal tools, farming skills, and new burial customs. And they didn't just live alongside native hunter-gatherers, they started replacing them. The thing is, genetic studies show that the Beaker people carried different genes that gave them lighter skin and different blood types. And within just a few hundred years, they had mixed with or overtaken most of the older population. This beaker's arrival marked the beginning of the Bronze Age in Scotland. With farming came permanent settlements, more organized tribes, and eventually long-distance trade. Then came the Iron Age, when even more cultural practices were introduced and more genetic mixing took place, especially with incoming groups that brought early forms of Celtic language and tradition. As centuries passed, Scotland's population and cultures kept evolving. And by the time the Iron Age gave way to something more tribal, a new identity began to rise in the North. It's from this mixing of ancient bloodlines and cultural transformation that the Picts would eventually emerge. Prepare to be shocked by how strangely diverse Scottish DNA kept becoming with each passing year until even today's scientists got very confused. Scotland's Mysterious Painted Warriors The Picts were Scotland's so-called painted people. They were fierce warriors who battled the Romans and carved strange symbols into stone. But suddenly, they seemed to vanish. At least, that's how we've been told in history books. They lived north of the Forth and Clyde, and while they terrified their enemies, they barely left a written record of their own. What little we know comes mostly from outsiders like the Romans who described them as tattooed or painted fighters who refused to be tamed. For generations, scholars debated. Were they invaders from the far north or simply a unique tribe that just happened to reduce in number until they became history? Now science has finally cracked the case. Recent DNA studies from ancient grave sites in places like Ballantor in the Highlands and Lundin Lynx in Fife have revealed that the Picts actually weren't outsiders or mysterious migrants, they were locals. Their genetic makeup matches Iron Age populations that had already been in Scotland for centuries before the Picts rose to power. The DNA 
from these ancient Picts closely matches that of modern Highland Scots. This means that the Picts didn't just vanish. They married into the rising Gaelic-speaking culture, changed their local names, adopted the customs of the Gaelic-speaking people, and simply blended in. While the Picts held firm in the north, the Romans were moving in from the south. They built forts and roads and tried, unsuccessfully, to push their empire into Caledonia, the name they gave to untamed Scotland. They never truly conquered it, but that doesn't mean they left no trace. Some recent DNA studies suggest the possibility of Mediterranean ancestry in regions near old Roman frontiers like Hadrian's Wall, potentially from soldiers posted there, but these findings are still debated and require more evidence. These genetic hints may come from Roman soldiers from far-off provinces like Spain, Syria, or North Africa, who were stationed at the border of the empire and may have fathered children with local women. Although the time the Romans occupied Scotland was brief and mostly limited to border zones, some of their genes got mixed with that of the Scottish, and this genetic mixing still exists in the DNA of some Scots today, especially in lowland families. As the Roman influence faded, a new wave of foreign contact started, this time from the Vikings that hailed from the north and across the sea. The Vikings' Influence in Scotland When the Vikings began raiding Scotland in the late 8th century, they eventually settled, especially in the Ornkey, Shetland and Western Islands. These Norse settlers left a strong genetic imprint, particularly in male Y DNA lines that are still prominent in island populations today. Later, the Normans, descendants of the Norsemen who had settled in France, arrived in Scotland, but unlike other foreigners, they didn't use force. Instead, they got in through politics and royal favor. They mixed French, Norse, and Breton ancestry into the southern aristocracy, reshaping land ownership, clan structure, and surnames. Names like Bruce and Stuart trace back to these powerful newcomers. Their genetic markers can still be found in lowland Scots and the bloodlines of noble families, distinguishing them from the more isolated highland populations. Beyond the better known invasions, isolated cases of Scottish DNA have shown rare markers that may trace back to places like North Africa, Siberia, or the Middle East. Though these are not widespread and are sometimes speculative, some researchers hypothesize that these rare markers could stem from Roman soldiers recruited from distant provinces, long-distance trade, or even Viking journeys into Eastern Europe, but such links need further study. Then there's Scotland's famous clan system, which is often thought of as a group of people with shared ancestry. But modern DNA testing has shown that the truth is a bit messier. Some clans, like the McDonald's, are very diverse at the genetic level, with multiple unrelated male lineages having the same surname. This suggests that the clan name may have acted more like a banner than a bloodline, with different families adopting it over time for protection, political allegiance, or social unity. On the other hand, clans like the Campbells show a more consistent Y DNA pattern, pointing to a single or limited number of male founders. The Highlands, the Islands, and the DNA time capsules. These genetic differences reveal just how diverse the clan system really was, and the rugged Scottish land only made these variations more diverse. Mountains, glens, and especially the islands created what you could call natural genetic time capsules. That kept some communities isolated and their gene pools relatively undisturbed for centuries. On islands like Islay and Lewis, for instance, unique DNA signatures have been found that rarely show up anywhere else, making them distinct populations even within Scotland itself. When it comes to royalty, testing is more limited. Researchers are interested in the genetic legacies of people like Robert the Bruce, who may have carried traits linked to leprosy, and Mary, Queen of Scots, whose ancestry had scientists and historians intrigued for years. Today, the reach of Scottish DNA goes far beyond the Highlands. Millions of people in places like Canada, the United States, Australia and New Zealand are using modern testing to trace their roots back to Scotland, often finding connections that link them not to just famous names, 
but to the ordinary clans, islanders, and farmers who had those genes through history. They still exist in the genes of modern Highlanders and Islanders. If you enjoyed this exploration of Scottish DNA, then hit the like button. To stay updated on more ancient history and recent impressive DNA analysis on these ancient people, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next videos.